Hey guys, how you doing? Dan Hennessy here. I'm here with my dad, also Dan Hennessy. Um, I want to thank you guys for stopping by. Um, don't forget to check out truefreefitness.com. We have a bunch of different testimonials and different uh, cool information. Our blog has tons of free info, tips, etc. So, um, but uh, what I wanted to do today is give you a real life look at um, someone who has been through the process, who kind of understands it from a couple different levels. Um, who's doing it in his plus 60 years. And um, I, think it's, I think it'll be very helpful for a lot of people out there that maybe encounter a lot of stumbling blocks or that think that, you know, it's just not for me or they can't do it or they're too old now or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think hearing his perspective from his point of view will be really beneficial, you know, whether you're 20 years old or whether you're 70 years old or anywhere in between. So um, I'm gonna have my dad kind of speak a little bit about uh, kind of your story, like how you got to this point. Like, tell us a little bit about what you've done maybe in your past, um, and then when it started to get maybe a little bit more serious in terms of when you really started to pay attention to your health and really started to take action. And... Okay. <clears throat> well, I've always been uh, kind of health conscious. I've always done things that I thought were healthy, running, working out, Grew up in the Arnold era. Uh, he was one of my favorites, him and Frank Zane, and some of those bodybuilder types. Never really aspired to be one of them, but uh, used to pump iron with my brothers and things. Um, <clears throat> and then over the years, you know, work and other things got in the way. And uh, although I was doing it on and off, never really thought too much about it until I got a little bit older. And then uh, it started to become a little bit more serious in terms of my health. I never thought of my health as being bad. Um, and then went to the doctor one day and they told me, oh, you know, you're a candidate for metabolic syndrome, which is you're over 40, your waist is 40, right. uh, your blood pressure is high, sugar's high, all those things that are kind of going to culminate in uh, you know, probably a life changing disease. Um, and I thought, well, maybe it's about time that I really got serious and started to look into it a little bit further from a different angle. So, a lot of things he kind of talked about right there, but let's kind of back up a little bit. What types of, uh, what is your experience with exercise? So you talked about Ar kind of the Arnold era, the bodybuilding era, right. but you were also <clears throat> a Marine. You were also, you know, they have that whole kind of physical training aspect to it. So kind of talk a little bit about that. A lot of running. Um, went through a lot of different phases in terms of uh, when there was a period we did fit for life um, and that's where you eat uh, you, you don't eat your proteins and starches at the same time went through a number of different uh, the Miami what is that, South Beach and I had somebody tell me oh South Beach you know you should try that did that for a while but you, you know you do it to a point it gets kind of old and right. um, you look for the next thing right so it wasn't like you were like new to fitness or diets or eating well or trying to be in better shape. It's something that's been kind of a part of your life for. I, I guess I've been on that yeah on that journey on that search. You know right. what's going to work right for me and what's going to sustain itself. And it's always you know went the uh, what, what do they call that where you uh, the yo-yo type of right. uh, <clears throat> thing where I you know I get to a point where I thought it was good, kind of slack right. off a little bit and come back. Um, but it was, it was always the fad. Right. And you were never, you were never really out of shape, right? So you were basically, you know, the, the Marines kind of, they make you into an athlete, right? You're, well, yeah. you're, you're very, yeah. very lean. You got to be very strong, a lot of endurance. There's weight requirements. Uh, they beat the crap out of you. You had to, uh, you know, every year I got weighed had to meet those requirements. Uh, so it, it kind of kept you in, in in that mode. Now there were some times where as I got older I started to get a little bit heavier. Right. It got a little bit harder to... So when was that point? 30s, 40s? Probably uh, as I was approaching 40. So at about 40 you started to realize this is getting a little bit more difficult. Um, it, it got yeah, very difficult. And with kids and working and right. there were times when I was working two jobs and it was very difficult to eat healthy, I guess. You know, you run into a lot of fast food right. and those types of things, and that kept me, you know, kind of out of balance. 
Okay, so that takes us to about your 40s. So in your 40s, going into your 50s, kind of what was, you know, as you start to maybe saw your health kind of slip a little bit, or maybe the waistline grows a little bit, um, when, when did you kind of, what was the mindset there? What was your game plan? And then when did you actually get diagnosed with what is called metabolic syndrome, which is essentially where um, things aren't working so well. And it's, it's a lot harder for you to lose weight and the cells aren't functioning, your metabolism isn't functioning as well, and uh, the waistline gets bigger, you put on more fat, uh, energy levels maybe drop a little bit, um, and you, now you're starting to talk also about being pre-diabetic as well. Correct. So that kind of leads into kind of a, a, what they call adult onset diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Right. So say 40s, 50s, in, in my 40s and 50s, you know, uh, one of those things that, you know, I, call it the old reliable was I just go out and run. Right. So <clears throat> if uh, my waistline started to get big, I started to feel a little heavy, uh, out of shape, um, I would go run. And sometimes I'd run five miles a day, every day. And that was one of those things, that was my... Um, fallback. Fallback, right. Yeah. <clears throat> and, but it was one of those type of things where, okay, if I went out and ran, and I'd go five miles, that was my license to eat whatever I wanted to that right. day. So once I got my weight to uh, to uh, where I wanted to be, um, you know, that that running is, is what did it, and I wasn't eat, really eating healthy. Right. And so what was I doing? I, I really didn't know what I was doing in terms of muscle and lean muscle and things like that. I can remember uh, being at the Y, and I'd go there at the, in the mornings at around 5, 5.30, and get on a treadmill and uh, <clears throat> one day after about going for about two or three months uh, a guy goes uh, you getting anything out of this I says, <laughs> I says no Why? he says you know I do this every day and I'm the same weight right and I'm saying I know it's crazy right we're in here sweating our butts off at five right. o'clock in the morning and right. it's not doing it what's the point right so that's kind of made me realize does that, that sound familiar yeah, yeah that kind of made me realize it. And so I'm not the only one who was thinking I was crazy. Right. Okay? That this is a crazy way to do this, uh, trying to maintain. So as I got <clears throat> older, when I went to the doctor, I guess I was, I guess I was approaching my late 50s, you know, 55, whatever. Went to the doctor, and that's when the metabolic syndrome came in. I couldn't believe it myself because I didn't see myself that way. Um, although when she pointed to the poster on the wall, and I'm saying, she said, "That's you." going, wow, you know, that's kind of crazy, uh, yeah. saying yourself through somebody else's eyes. So that's when I talked to you about, hey, maybe we should, uh, maybe we should do a little something together, and, uh, you know, because you were doing the uh, personal training and things like that, and uh, you know, that's when we started to, to work together, I think. Yeah, so that was about, like, that was almost like three years ago, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. So, yeah, so about three years ago, well, first of all, just to kind of touch on a point that he just made, so... He was doing the same thing kind of over and over again. He had his routine down. He was getting into the gym early. He was getting on the treadmill. He was maybe doing a little bit of weights. Mm -hmm. um, but what people fail to realize is anytime you start an exercise program, your body will typically gain weight um, and for a couple different reasons. If you're doing strength training, you might be putting on muscle, number one. Um, but number two, you kind of you feel like you have this license, like he said, to, okay, I did my 5 a.m. workout or my workout for the day or whatever it was, my two miles, five miles, whatever it might have been. Uh, now I can eat whatever I want. Um, so your hunger typically goes up, especially if you're running, because you're doing a lot of work for, you know, what, an hour, half an hour, sure. whatever it might be. So your body's going, man, we just did a lot of stuff. We need some food. And you have this thought in your head that goes, well, I just, I just did something quote unquote good. Now I can do something quote unquote fun, which usually also equals quote unquote bad. So you might have whatever it might be, the pizza at lunch instead of maybe something better or so on and so on, uh, you know, whatever your thing happens to be. But so he realized, you know, through again, through somebody else's eyes, right? Because it's so hard to see ourselves. The doctor stepped in and said, hey, look, this is what's going on here. The guy at the gym goes, hey, is this even working? <laughs> you know, like you're not moving in the right direction. Um, so there needs to be, there's more pieces to the puzzle essentially. And that's when you kind of said, uh, when we started having a conversation, I had been training for probably uh, seven or seven years or so at that point. And you know, he's obviously seen me doing my thing and all that. 
then we finally started having a conversation and started to train a little bit. And then, so talk to us a little bit about once we started actually working together about three years ago, and it was and it was basically just the training, right? It was just personal training, I think. Yeah. Well, at first it was the boot camps. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and there was some hesitation there too because you know. Um, I don't know, being competitive, being a male and all those things, didn't want to look silly in front of everybody else. And uh, But then, you know, once I went, they were kind of fun, and that progressed into personal training. Um, started to see some gains, waist, and all those things. It was kind of strange, I thought, uh, at times where my weight wasn't really going anywhere, and then all of a sudden things would start to fit better and all that. That was, that was kind of an eye-opener there that, uh, you know, the uh, the measuring stick I always used was the scale. Right. You know? And and part of that was from my background where you got to get weighed in. Right. So this is part of the belief system that people have. Oh, I have to do it a certain way. I have to pay attention to the scale. Right. But one of the you know one of the most amazing parts of that is you were you allowed yourself to be willing to something new. You said, okay, this is a boot camp um, class that that I was teaching up at K Strength Sports Training Facility in Fairfield at the time and that's kind of a scary thing, right? Most people, most guys especially, they don't like classes because you might look weak or silly or you didn't move well or something like that or you feel like you're just gonna get your butt kicked and you don't wanna look like a chump or whatever. Um, so you had to be willing to do that. And once you started to do something different, you stimulated your body in a different way, you started to feel things a different way, the clothes started to fit better, you know, the waistline started to go. And then, so that was about, uh, I think six months, and then you transitioned into personal training. Personal training. And so that's like a, that's a little bit step above. So, you know, a class setting is kind of like, you know, a big auditorium style college class. Um, this is kind of more like one on one going to see the teacher after school. And so once you started doing that, did you notice anything different from there? Yeah, sure. I, you know, I, I still did the, the boot camps, you know, at least once a week. Um, to stay, you know, in tune with that. It was kind of fun, and you know, your mom went right. and things. Uh, but um, some of the things that I started to learn was, uh, you know, from the personal training is was one, it wasn't as easy as I thought it was. Right. So I had those type of, I had the mentality of I knew what I was doing. Right. Right. I knew how to do these things, and then um, found out that I didn't quite know exactly what I thought I knew. I wasn't doing things the correct way. I tried to, you know, my mindset was, oh, it's got to be heavier, or it's not worth it. Right. And um, but in the, you know, you were teaching me things like you could get hurt, you got to do safety, right. all those things. You know, it's not so much uh, the, the amount of weight, but the proper technique and those things. The quality over the quantity. Right. So I started to get a different mindset about that, and then as we started to learn some of that throw in some of the nutritional uh, coaching, you started to open up your mind to different ways of doing things. Um, one of the things I couldn't really do anymore was run. My, uh, my one leg is, uh, for whatever reasons, it wasn't, it was painful to run, let's put it that way. And so I couldn't do that. That was my old standby, right? right. So now I had to do something else. And um, I went to a chiropractor, meditation, all those things started to become interesting. Right. So if I remember correctly, um, you were kind of, you just started, I think the first year we worked together, it was just the workouts, right? It was the boot camps, it was the personal training. It wasn't until about a year or so after we started that we started doing the nutritional aspect of things right. and start to tap into kind of these other areas. So I think initially you saw a little bit of weight loss I did. I think I did a challenge or two that probably added to uh, right. To so we started. We, we started to dabble in some of the nutritional stuff. Mm -hmm. You lost about. Do you remember what it was in that first year? Like 10, 15? Yeah, it was about fifteen. It's about fifteen pounds or so in that first year together, and then we started. We started doing this nutritional coaching program, which has evolved into what True for You Fitness is today. Um, and then while we were on that, you started to learn a lot more about not just kind of food, um, but started to opening up different avenues in your lifestyle that you talked about, some of the meditation stuff, some of the uh, stress reduction things, mm -hmm. um, how to do things when things inevitably go wrong. You can't run, that was his go-to. So now what do you do? You learn other ways of getting around things. And then 
once we started working into the nutritional stuff, we saw another kind of big drop in weight, right? We did. And then, uh, <clears throat> so we went through the nutritional route. I started to learn a lot about from you about uh, different ways of eating, what to eat, um, how to eat, when to eat, those type of things, how, to, you know, how that works in conjunction with um, the training. And then um, we kind of hit a plateau. And we've tried, we've tried a number of different things to get past that. And obviously you saw something, you know, we were doing all the right things, but for some reason we weren't getting the result. So uh, we took it to another level. Right. Went to um, a nutritionist and went through that process and started to see some gains again. So right. uh, yeah, it's been pretty, uh, pretty eye-opening. So as my dad was just explaining, as we got into the nutritional coaching aspect of things, again, this is kind of like, uh, I, I like to use the analogy of kind of going through school because we, most of us have gone through school. So kind of learning how to move well, that's kind of like just kind of getting into kind of kindergarten, first grade, kind of elementary school. Then we started taking it to nutritional stuff. Now you start to get into kind of freshman in high school, you start to learn a little bit more, become a little bit more self-aware. Um, and then if you want to, you know, inevitably you're gonna run into some type of block or obstacle. Um, it could be psychological, it could be emotional, it could be physical, it could be a lot of different things. And that's kind of getting past high school and going into kind of college and really getting a lot more pieces to the puzzle and then you can keep going, right? You can get your master's and your PhD and all that good stuff. But, so, along that line, we were doing pretty well, but then we kind of hit this roadblock and we were kind of stagnant for a couple months there. One of my previous clients, who was actually the, the winner in 2016 of our transformation, um, if you look through our YouTube channel, you'll see her information, um, but she actually found a functional medicine nutritionist named Marina, who now we're teamed up with, um, and she, had, um, she sought her out because she had a similar issue with her gut that my father had. So she found her on her own, went out, did her thing, consulted with her. She got phenomenal results. We were able to kind of collaborate and really figure out what was going on there. We got her gut healed. She had an autoimmune issue um, and, and we saw really good results from that. So I was, I was, I was astounded. I was like, wow, you know, this is, um, Marina's doing a really great job. Um, I need her as one of my resources so I can help people better. Um, interestingly enough, a couple months later, my dad runs into a similar issue. I start to see that the waist is still kind of inflamed. We're doing all the right things, staying on track. Um, and, but the, the key was we had to take all these options off the table first. We had to, you can't just go from kindergarten to college, right? You have to learn all these steps along the way. You have to go through this process. And once we took everything off the table, then I said, okay, I reached out to Trisha. I said, put me in contact with Marina. I want to get my dad in there. He got in there, we started to do some deeper testing, we started to look at his nutrient profile, we started to look at a couple other things, and we found that there was a, that basis of kind of that autoimmune issue. And at the core of most disease is inflammation, and that's usually a result of some type of autoimmune response due to a leaky gut in some way, shape, or form. So she was able to get in there, she was able to find out, and it removed something that was just, we were racking our brains to get. Um, so by having more help, by having more resources, by having this network now that we've kind of developed, he was able to move past that. And then we started experiencing more uh, weight loss. Um, everything started to get a little bit better. We'll also put up some pictures here from kind of his journey over the couple of years. It's really dramatic to kind of see him now versus even just like a year ago, um, or even at the start of um, our pro coach, which is our new and improved lifestyle nutritional coaching system that's 100% online, um, and so that's kind of, that kind of fast forwards us up to today, where he's been in this new coaching system that we have, again, it's called ProCoach, where he's been doing that for, I believe, six months now, he's about halfway through, about halfway through, and he's down 26 pounds from the start of that, so six months ago we lost, um, he was 26 pounds heavier, um, but all these other things started to kind of come together and click, um, you know, again, started to get smaller clothes, we started to talk about things like meditation, stress reduction, et cetera, et cetera. So talk to us a little bit about in the last, I guess, kind of six months from when we even kind of just brought everything kind of together in a, in a, in a lot of ways. Yeah. So uh, joining ProCoach, um, 
well, how is it different from what we were doing before? So we, he had been through nutritional coaching, but this was before I was certified through Precision Nutrition, before I was a level one coach, before I had access to the pro coach system. Um, so it, it was similar. We were talking about similar things, but this is a much different delivery system. It is. It is. I was, and I was kind of surprised uh, when I first uh, started out. Um, <clears throat> I was waiting for the, okay, I guess you use the analogy of the zero to 100 time. You know? Right. I was looking for, okay, let's jump into this thing and, and get cooking, right? And um, I started the program and I'm waiting for them to talk about what I'm supposed to eat and how I'm supposed to eat. And the first couple of weeks, we didn't talk about that at all. Right. It was, uh, you know, there, it's a very, um, there's a process. You build habits and those habits you build on top of each other. And I'll tell you, it's been a very rewarding experience. It makes me... Um, and can I remember all the habits at, at any given time? No, but some of the ones stuck with me. Make time for myself every day. I try to do that, do a lesson a day. It takes me about 10, 15 minutes sometimes, and it, but it opens up my mind about thinking about things. How am I doing things? Why am I doing things the way I do? Um, uh, eating you know, slower, enjoying the food. I actually taste food now instead of just, uh, you know, I grew up with, uh, five boys in the house, and so what you did was you fought for your food, right? You gobbled it down, and that was it. When it went in the Marine Corps, same thing. You, you ate, and you're, you went. Now I enjoy the food. Um, some of the other things that um, you do, um, sleep. I never thought about that, how to go about right. getting, uh, you know, preparing to go to sleep and uh, getting a good night's sleep. And those things, you know, I find myself, I have a lot more energy and things like that. So it's very habit-driven, 80% um, full, right? So I'm eating my meal, I go to 80% full, and then I can let it go. Right. So um, there's a ton of other things that come back to me all the time. I always think about them, you know, during the course of the day, whether I'm going to eat, if I'm eating out, and all those type of things. So it's been very rewarding, and it opens up my way of thinking to other things. Right. So what he's talking about there, he's really describing this process of opening up his awareness to actually what he's doing, his habits. And by noticing the way you actually go about your day and how you eat and how you sleep and how you prepare your food, are you enjoying it? Are you having fun? Are you, you, know, are you actually engaged in the process in a way where you're excited about it to a certain degree? This is all behavioral change and it starts up here in your psychology and your mindset and how you're going about it. It's a much more deliberate process instead of just saying, okay, we know we need to eat more vegetables. Okay, we know we want lean proteins and we want good fats and smart carbs and et cetera. Um, what does it really mean though? Or how involved are you in that process? Are you just kind of, okay, I need to eat vegetables and then you know it's back to grinding away at work and not really having an understanding, not having enough gravity and context? Or are you now getting into the process where you're not living by a set of rules, it just be kind of comes the way you do stuff. And this is why we call it lifestyle and nutrition because it wasn't this drastic overhaul. It wasn't, you know, all these crazy things that we had to do. It was simply, like he said in the beginning, just start to become aware of what's going on here. Uh, you know, if I do eat a piece of food, no matter what it is, it could be McDonald's or it could be, you know, a gourmet organic salad, um, how does it taste? Chew it a couple more times. Let those molecules kind of mix up in your mouth. And then you see how you feel. Is it giving me more energy? Is it not? Once you start to become more aware of what you're doing, you naturally want to do good stuff. You want to feel good. You want to have fun. You want to um, enjoy it, right? You don't want to be some type of uh, robot or slave to some type of rule book that you have to uh, incorporate. Instead, you make it your own process. Um, you know, there's, there's very little me telling him what to do per se versus him discovering better ways that are appropriate to where he's at in life, where his time, you know, how much time he has. Um, you know, he's, he's basically at work for 12 hours a day when you factor in the commute back and forth. And so all these different factors that come into it. Um, so you have to make it your own thing because that's kind of the key here. If you don't have, if it's not yours, you know, you're much more willing to follow your own set of beliefs and guidelines and so forth versus anybody else's. Oh, sure, sure. It's, it's 
<clears throat> it's one of those things that if you had somebody telling me what to do all the time, it's like, you know, you back off. And you've tried that already, right? Yes. You know, that was that was the military. That yeah. is the Atkins diet. That is the whatever diet. Sure. That is the... You have to, you have to, you have to. Right. But uh, this is more, you, you take it on yourself, and you just help to guide us through, you know, through those things, help us think a little bit more about, you know, what we're trying to do. Right. Um, it's, it's, it is transformational. One of the things that I've always done is uh, kind of a lazy, got that lazy streak in me, so I would make something to eat. And that was what I would eat for the week. Right. You know, now I'm starting to expand that a little bit, uh, cook a little bit differently, try new recipes, so um, making food a little bit more fun. Right. And uh, and it is. It's uh, and it tastes better too. It it does. <laughs> so you want you want to actually eat it more. <laughs> right. And you, you don't you don't get the boredom. Know, the board. Right. right. Board. Yes. So, yeah, so again, it's just those little things, like even just understanding, like, he's not a big, he was never a big cooker in general, not a big spice user or other ingredients and things like that. So as you start to learn about some of these things, you try them out and you go, oh, wait a minute, I like this, I like that, or I don't like this so much, I don't like that so much. So it's this kind of personal growth process um, that happens from within. We start from the inside and that kind of filters in and as, as a byproduct, you get healthier. Right, you get happier. Your energy levels are higher, like he said. Stress levels are lower. Stress levels are lower. Um, and even even if you walk away with nothing else, like he said, he doesn't remember everything that we do. It's again, we're not studying for a final exam here. But these things, these little tidbits that he keeps with him, open up for more stuff down the road, and you can experience things in a different way. And that's where the real transformation comes from, because. Again, you know, it's a year-long program. There's over 300 lessons. Um, there's about 24 habits that we that we try to work on, and we don't expect you to take them all because that's not realistic. Yeah. But those ones, those things that hit you and resonate with you, now all of a sudden they infiltrate into your DNA, and it's it's how you go about your day. You sleep a little different. You wake up a little bit different. You handle stress a little bit different. So on and so on, uh, so on and so forth. And you don't beat yourself up if you. If you fall off the wagon. Right, and you learn things like self-compassion because there's there's no real falling off the wagon, right? You're still going to eat something. Exactly. <laughs> You're always on a nutritional program. It's just are you being aware of it and is it moving you closer to your goals? Um, as long as you're alive, you're typically going to be eating. So mm -hmm. why not have fun with it and why not have it work for you in terms of against, as opposed to against you? So what would you say are maybe your top three takeaways from... I guess this whole process of lifestyle and nutritional coaching, um, if, if you could kind of give people, you know, three, three little highlights, what, what, what were your three big takeaways? They could be food, it could be exercise, it could be overall, any, anything. Well, one of the takeaways that I got from it is this. So I started to feel better about myself and things started to fit and all those things. But, um, <clears throat> so I think I told you the story about at work where we're sitting there talking about, uh, hey, Dan, you know, Looks like you've been losing some weight and different things. You, you're working out, you're dieting, and all this. No, not really dieting. You know, it's just a different lifestyle. It's uh, taking on a, a new way of doing things. And um, they said, well, you got to be eating less than. I'm saying, no, as a matter of fact, I see what you eat every day, and I eat more than you do. Right. So I don't deprive myself in any way, shape, or form. Right. And I feel a lot better for it. And that's one of those things. When pe other people start to notice it, then you go, wow, you right. know, this is really starting to, uh, to take hold. So takeaway would be, I don't know. I, maybe, I you don't, maybe you don't know everything you think you know? Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> no, that's, definitely, that's definitely one of them. Everybody wants to think that the only way you can lose weight is you reduce the amount of food you take in. Right. And that, that does work, but only for a very short period of time, it does. right? And it's not sustainable, it's not fun. Eventually, you're going to start eating more food again. And, yeah, it might not be the healthiest way. And it's not, yeah. well, it's not the healthiest way, but a lot of people aren't really concerned with being the healthiest. They just no, want the weight to go down. They just want the weight to go down. So, yeah, there's a lot of skinny people running around that uh, have that, problems. Right. So, and um, when you don't eat enough, you don't get enough nutrients. So a lot of the things we did was we just boosted how much nutrient he's getting. Nutrients equal energy, equal healthier, equal skinnier equal right. you know in better shape so mm -hmm. you need nutrients that's yeah, your like salads and things like that you know green leafy vegetables and things so uh, plus I'm starting to expand you know those things 
lettuce, no, not only lettuce, but I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm experimenting with different kinds of foods and vegetables and things like that. Takeaway is you gotta make time for yourself. Um, that's one of those things, you're always running around, you're always doing those things, everybody's busy, everybody has a million things to do, school, work, kids, all those things, but uh, even if you just make 10 minutes for yourself a day, you get a lot better mindset. Right. You know, I do it in the morning, so when I go to work I have a better, better oh, feeling look. about things. Yeah. Yes, uh, Sunday, I, I noticed it's Sunday nights, Sunday nights, even Saturday night, I used to get anxious by, oh man, the weekend's almost over, I gotta go back to the grind, but now it doesn't bother me anymore. Um, so his outlook has changed. He's, I think it has. He's, he's, he's learned skills to kind of, again, he kind of, maybe you're looking forward to something like maybe cooking the next meal or yeah. maybe getting to the next workout or um, a lot of what he does now is what we call unprocessed exercise, right? You get a, you get a lot more walking in yes. and, and you do more things, just being more active in general. Yeah, so in a way that you enjoy. Uh, right. So on those days, you know, there there were times in the course of my life that I worked out every day, worked out every other day, you know, depending on who the who the guru at the time was, Mike Mentzer and all that stuff, you know, every other day, you know, and you go all all out. Um, but now I try to do something every day. Uh, I don't. You know, I might not hit the weights every day. I try to do them a couple times a week. I may do uh, one of the conditioning uh, workouts, uh, you know, body weight boot camp type mm -hmm. of thing, and uh, just going out and walking yeah. and trying to commune. So you're eating more than you probably ever were, so get more nutrients, that's one takeaway. Two is your mindset. Your mindset has changed a lot, and it, and it started with just taking a couple minutes each day to put a little bit of thought into that and taking some time for yourself. One more takeaway, maybe talk to a lot of people that are 40 plus, 50 plus, 60 plus, they have this belief that this is it. They, they can't make any changes now. It's too hard and too old. Uh, you know, my body doesn't work like it used to. You know, all those kind of things that come with it. So what kind of maybe the third thing we can close on here is talk a little bit about that. All right, so. It is hard. I was in my 20s, 30s, yeah. right? I always thought that being 60 was old. Right. You know? That was it. And you're how old now? 61. Yes. And um, what, one thing that, that I do realize, although my body might not work exactly the way it does, this up here is still spinning. Right. right. It's still going. So um, <clears throat> I found that it's, whether you're 60, whether I was 40, uh, I tell you what, I feel better than I, than I have in a very long time. Um, Why? Because I eat better. Why? Because I can work out still and all those things. Is the workout the same way that I used to? No. But do I do weights? Do I do all those things? Yes. And a lot of those would lead to my, you know, lead to uh, those type of things. It's more functional maybe. Right. Now. It's, it's appropriate to where you're at, right? Right. So yeah, it's harder when you're older, right? Because we maybe don't have the same strength levels, whatever, right. energy levels. Um, but, but it fools you. Yeah. But, uh, but you can also sometimes. still make progress, right? Oh yeah. As as long as you're getting the right information in, right? So maybe you're not doing a crazy CrossFit workout like you maybe would have done when you were 20, mm -hmm. but you're doing you're still lifting weights and you're still putting loads on your body and you're still moving well, right. and you can always improve. I think that's kind of the big takeaway. Is I've even had clients that are 74 years old that have gained muscle and lost right. weight it's, and it's, increased their energy level. So squatting, for instance, you know, I would never like to squat. I'm not saying I'm a fan of it right now, but what I am saying is that I can get down a lot lower than I right. than I used to. And ex yeah, especially as you age, range of motion is number one. You know, we lose our flexibility, range of motion, uh, you know, balance, things like this. They go a lot faster because we typically sit a lot more, right? Yeah. And then you feel like you have less energy, so it's this kind of cycle of doing less, doing less, doing less. Yeah. And as a result, you kind of decline faster and faster and faster. Yeah. But if you can even just do one, even if you can just walk a little bit more, you know, you're adding more motion, and that's really the key to life is movement and, and, and staying yeah. in it. And it, body and mind. You right. Know, with a walk, you're out there, you're thinking about things, you're getting things off your chest, whatever. You can, you can listen to, uh, you know, a motivational talk. Whatever. Right. You find ways to make it fun. Right. And you find things that you can actually do. People get so limited by, oh, I can't, you know, maybe, it, 
take squatting for example. A lot of people have a back issue, a knee issue, whatever. Um, so maybe you don't squat. There's a million other things you could be doing, right? Oh yeah. So no, there is, and, and you know the what do they call those things of daily living? The, uh, everything, you know. I try to relate it to squatting. You're going to bend down. You're going to be picking things up. You're going right. to be reaching for things. My balance. I work on that. Right. You know, the, one of the things that happens when you get older, um, and I think it's one of the leading uh, issues when you get older is falls. Right. You know. So now I. I don't worry about those things because right. you know I'm on the ground doing crunches. I'm standing up. I'm doing uh, you know. You're practicing it as right. a daily exactly. thing. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's a it's a part of your lifestyle now, and it's right. and, it, and I think this whole idea when people hear lifestyle, it's not that your lifestyle is bad or that you suck. It's just that you can get a little bit better, right? Like if you are if you have a job or if you've ever played a sport or if you've done anything you know that you can always get a little bit better and improve, and this is no different. People just think that they're stuck because they get into these patterns and routines, um, but we can change those. We can offer a new thing, even if it's just 1%, even if it's just having a little bit more fun in the kitchen or with your food or whatever it might be. Well, expanding your perspective your, right, on yeah. life. Opening up your awareness, exactly. mindset, um, thinking about things a little bit differently, that's really the key to growth, and there's really only two states you're ever in. You're either in protection, that's where most people are sitting, right? They're kind of nervous, they're anxious about going to work on the weekend, come Monday morning, they're worried about the bills, the finances, and not to say that you won't ever be those things, but you can see, see it for what it is, look the monster in its eyes and go, okay, this is what everybody goes through. I'm a human being, that's okay. Now what can I do to move forward? And that's when you get into growth, and that's when you start to become a little happier, you get a little bit in better shape, energy levels pick up. You can start moving along in life. Um, it, you know, it, it almost seems like by the time we're done with our education process, we kind of stop on all regards in terms of improving ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, only like 7% of Americans like read books, you know, 80% um, of people that start a fitness program wind up quitting in the first month. So it's, it, you know, it's a lot of these different things where we kind of think if we're not in a program or if we're not in a school setting that we're not actually getting better and, and that's just simply not true. Um, you can still get better even if you never sign up for anything that we do here. Um, you can read a blog, you can pick up a book, you can do a lot of different things. Um, and I think that's the big takeaway here is that you can keep growing until you're the last breath that you got. Well, think, think about it, think about it in terms of age, okay, 60 years old. Uh, there was a time when 60 years old meant that, you know, you were at the end of the line. Right. Right? With today and longevity, I've got another 25, 30 years. Right. I've got to, you right. know, I've got to be able to function. So right. do I want to function Poorly. the way I want to? Right. Or do I want have to have somebody help me do everything I want? No, I want to be as active and energetic and, Right. All those things as I can be. So whether you're 40 and maybe you s start to move or whether you're 60 or, you know, 70, you know, right. now's the time to step it up. You know, it's, and what, what do they say about, uh, you know, nutrition and things like that? That's the fountain of youth. You know, if you right. know, if you can get a handle on those things now, you're never too, too old. Right, exactly. So um, also, you also have a blog, right? And, you, and a mm -hmm. website. And what's that? Aging with Dan. So agingwithdan.com, he does a lot of research on how can we age a little bit better? How can we get a little bit more out of that, right? Well, I thought that, uh, you know, as I'm aging, there's a lot of, there's like uh, 10,000 of us a day turning 65. So as we get older, you know, there's more and more of us out there. And I think we're going through some similar things, right? What happens when the body starts to maybe shut down a little bit? Should you be nervous? What are those type of things? You know, how do we eat better? Um, how how are we going to make it from sixty to ninety? Right. What happens? Uh, are we saving enough money? Are we doing those type of things that we need to do to uh, make that happen? Or are we not thinking about it at all? But right. I think some of the things I've learned over my life is that when I'm thinking something, there's a lot of others right. thinking about the same. We're very rarely, uh, uh, you know, on that 
the man on the lonely island. If, exactly. if, if you've thought it or if you've gone through it or if you're feeling it, chances are there's a whole bunch of other folks out there. That's what I'm thinking. So there's a community out there that's, I haven't found anything that really addresses some of those issues. Um, I know people, a lot of people are busy and they don't have the time to research some of those things. So whether I become the expert or not, I just wanted to open up a dialogue to let everybody talk about it and see if uh, we can make people feel a little bit better about themselves, maybe understand what's happening and that it's not so bad and uh, you know, the journey, uh, enjoy the journey. Right, and again, you can have fun, you can grow, you can improve. Um, it's, it's, it's really just, if you're gonna be along on this ride, maybe you wanna jump in the driver's seat exactly. and, and steer your own ship, um, as opposed to kind of just living by default, going with the flow, taking other people's word for it, as opposed to discovering what's true for you, hence the name of our company. And so check out agingwithdan.com, um, check out trueforyoufitness.com, and um, I hope you got some value out of this. I hope that you start to change your thinking about this. I always tell people, again, I don't care if you ever work with me or not, I would love to be your coach, but just start thinking a little bit differently. If you can do that, if you can change your perspective, even in a small way, you're moving in the right direction. What that direction will be, you don't necessarily have to know, but if you can, now you're in that driver's seat. Now you're in a little bit more control. Now you can make improvements. Do you have anything else you want to say? No. It's been, it's been real. Thanks. All right. So that's it. Live in proof. You can do it. 61 years old. Just lost. He recently has lost 60, uh, 26 pounds over the last six months um, through our nutritional coaching program and lifestyle coaching program. So um, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. And um, stay tuned for more cool stuff down the road. Thank you.